Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So I wanna come on here and talk about T.I.'s interview on Jada Pinkett's Red Table Talk. So what went down is this. Basically, over the weekend, T.I., you know, he crept back to social media to promote his podcast expeditiously. Um, he stated on that he would not be talking about Hyman Gate. He was gonna save it for Red Table Talk. And then he went on to interview Chris Tucker. I want you guys to go ahead and watch this snippet, and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. This is Expeditiously. I am Tip T.I. Head. I know probably what you want to hear me speak more about, but you will not hear me speak about it right now because we have designated a place and a time to discuss that, and that is Red Table Talk, and you'll hear it next week. My silence is not because I don't have anything to say. My silence comes out of respect. But with that, I'm going to move on to... All right, so you guys just saw what T.I. posted this weekend. So, of course, Monday morning came and everybody was waiting for it. And then finally, Miss Jada Pinkett Smith dropped the Red Table Talk episode featuring T.I. and Tiny. And in this episode, like I said, I didn't want to just do commentary based off of the small clip that went viral. I wanted to watch the entire episode and then form my own opinion on it, okay? So I watched the full 22 minutes and I thought that Jada Pinkett did a really good job with this. But I saw a lot of deflection, I saw a lot of excuses, and I saw a lot of gaslighting coming from T.I., okay? Basically, T.I. is trying to play reverse psychology with his big-ass words. And he's trying to not blame the bloggers and the audience and everybody else. As opposed to him taking personal responsibility for the words that came out of his mouth. He's blaming everybody else because we don't understand that it was a joke. We, you know, we're, we were dumb. We're weirdos. We took it literally. And so it's our fault. You know what I mean? But, you know, fuck the fact that he's the one who said it. It's our fault for taking it literally. Y'all go ahead and watch this clip and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. I think all of this surrounds a conversation that I was having in a very joking manner right. when asked, yes. how do I yes. deal with parenting in this day and age? And so I just began to, you know, from a place of, of truth, I began to embellish and exaggerate. And I think that a lot of people kind of like took it extremely literal because if you put any of my reputation, by like who I am as a father and who I've been, I honestly thought people knew me better than that. Well, there's some of us that know you, but there's a lot yeah, of people but who don't. Yeah. Do you understand the sensitivity of no. it all? Really? I did not. Do you understand it now? Oh, I understand it now. Yes, I do. Absolutely. However, my intentions, I think, have been terribly misconstrued and right. misconceived. Right. Let me go set this record straight. I never said I was in any exam room. That is an assumption. Right. That is a falsity. Got it. Uh, I never said that uh, it was being done present day. All right, so you guys just watched that clip. So a lot of things bother me with that, okay? First and foremost, he's trying to say that this was a joke. This was all a joke, and people don't understand his sense of humor. My thing is this. The problem is T.I.'s persona is not a jokey, jokey persona. So when you go into a situation and you're talking on a podcast, and especially being that you carry yourself as conscious and woke, why wouldn't people take it literal? Because that's the way that you carry yourself. You don't carry yourself in a joking manner. I've never looked at T.I. and been like, yo, T.I. reminds me of Chris Rock. T.I. is funny like Kevin Hart. No, T.I. is that woke dude on social media who uses big words and speaks about, you know, black empowerment and all types of stuff, okay? T.I. and cracking jokes and comedy do not go hand in hand. So for him to get mad when this is a persona that he put out there, okay? He went from being a trap rapper to being, you know, the conscious brother who done read a bunch of books. So then he can't get in his feelings when people don't understand that he's joking. Another issue where him and the ladies drop the ball is if you watch my initial video about the topic, okay, that I did a few weeks ago, I said that as interviewers, they were immature, they were so enamored to have a big celebrity in their face that they dropped the ball. Part of interviewing is listening, okay? Instead of giggling and flirting and being so happy to be in the presence of T.I., they should have been listening because had they been listening and heard what was coming out of his mouth and what was coming out of his mouth was bullshit in his own words that he used towards Candace Owens. You started anything. with some bullshit. Okay. They would have been able to call him out on it and at that point we would have all known it was a joke because when he first started talking about the whole he takes her to go, you know, to go get her hymen check, he puts a note on her door, you know, first in the morning on the day of her birthday. 
what they should have said is, what? T.I., are you serious right now? No, nah, I'm just playing. And that would have deaded everything. But because they're so busy laughing and flirting and, you know, just being happy to be around him, that was one opportunity that they all could have had to let the world know that it was a joke. But the fact that they were laughing and their laughter to me was coming from kind of an uncomfortable place as well. I won't deny that. But the fact that they kept laughing and he kept going on with it, I don't see how anything in that conversation came off as a joke. But let me go ahead and replay it for you guys to refresh y'all's memory. Go ahead and check this out. By the way, your daughters are so beautiful. Yeah, so beautiful. So, Thank you so um, much. I'm sure I mean, you have her hands full. And like yeah, the other one's absolutely. 18, so she definitely knows oh, about and sex. She, but this is wait, it's Deja, right? She's 18, yes, right? Deja's yes, Deja's 18. Just graduated high school now. And she's uh, attending her first year of, of college, Ooh. figuring it out for herself. Uh, and yes, not only have we had the conversation, oh. we have yearly trips to the gynecologist to check her height. Oh, you, hey, <laughs> I'm done with you right now. So, you know, you uh, know do you go with her? She's a prisoner. Yes, I, yes, I go with her. Do you go with her? Somebody check on Deja. I go with her. She is a prisoner. Girl. So let me tell you, right? So. Of athletic physical activity. Is she an athlete? Can no. Oh, so, no. There you so go. I say, You're like, sorry, I doctor, say, look, that's I say, not look, a possibility. Doc. I say, look, doc. She's not. She don't ride no horses. She don't ride no bikes. She don't play no sports, man. Just check the hymen, please, and give me back my results. Oh, dude. Expeditiously. No. Expeditiously. And, but I will, you know, I will say, as of her 18th birthday, her hymen is still in. All right, so you guys just heard that. You guys heard the part where he's talking about putting the note on the door, you know, first thing in the morning. You know, when you tell a joke, you go into the situation lighthearted so everybody knows it's not a serious situation. In this entire podcast, there was nothing lighthearted about it besides the two grown women who couldn't stop giggling like some stupid-ass schoolgirls. That was the only thing lighthearted about it, but everything that was coming out of T.I.'s mouth sounded serious to a lot of people. Now, for people who may know him personally, you know, to them, they might have been able to tell that he was joking, and that's fine. But again, those people know him personally. We don't. We're on the outside looking in. That's what Jada Pinkett was pointing out. We don't know that you're joking. We don't know your temperament. Especially being on social media, you always come off as very serious. Another thing that bothers me is that after everything went viral, he doubled down. So if it was just a joke, why did you not just address it on your podcast? You have a platform. Why not go on to your podcast the very next day and address it and say, y'all, chill out. It was a joke. I would never disrespect my daughter like that. I apologize. Maybe I shouldn't have joked about that situation. Maybe I shouldn't have talked about her hymen. But he didn't do it. He doubled down and he kept it moving until the backlash got too great that then he decided to go and talk about it on the red, on the red table talk with Jada Pinkett Smith. You know, I felt like he was coming out very, very narcissistic. You know, even in his apology to his daughter, I apologize to my sweet Deja, but I ain't apologizing to you weirdos. You don't owe us no apology, brother. We didn't ask for an apology. People have only asked you to apologize to your daughter on the same platform that you disrespected her, okay? A public platform, which he's done, but even that apology came off as kind of insincere and kind of cold and dismissive okay and then I like the fact that Jada Pinkett did take a note out of my book for calling out T.I. and his hypocrisy how his son who was 14 at the time can sit on national television bragging about losing his virginity and T.I. sees nothing wrong with that but then his daughter is held to a whole different standard and he's admitted to that he's admitted to that hypocrisy on how he treats his daughter versus his son so Jada Pinkett did point that out okay but I didn't like the part where he was telling Jada that basically if you're grown enough to have sex and you grown enough to do this, then now you have to have adult responsibilities. You need to figure out your life. You need to know what you're trying to do. That to me makes no sense. Just because a teenager is having sex, that does not make them an adult. That doesn't mean that they're ready to live on their own, pay their own bills and things like that. You know, this logic makes no sense because T.I. is the same man who admitted years ago that he lost his virginity at 11. So by that logic, should your mom have kicked you out and made you go get an apartment and, you know, pay your own car note and house note because you were having sex at 11? I'm not condoning him having sex at 11, but what I'm saying is just because young children engage in sex, that does not make them adult, nor does it make them mentally mature, period, point blank. 
So you can't say that because she's having sex or he's having sex, that means they're grown and they need to, you know, make their own way and, and figure out their own life and start paying some bills and everything else. Like the stuff he was saying just was not making sense. You could tell he was even irritating Tiny by the way she was looking, okay? I feel like there was a lot of mush mouth double speak going on. You know, I think that T.I. is a good father, don't get me wrong. You know, I think that he has a good rapport with his children for the most part. You know, and he's trying to change. He's trying to change from that, you know, trap boy mentality and the things that he had to do and he's trying to be a better person but I feel like sometimes it comes off as very very narcissistic and very condescending and that's the part that I don't like okay in my opinion I just feel like this interview was nothing more than him trying to do damage control and trying to flip the script and gaslight the public as if we should take blame for how people felt about the words that came out of his mouth you know what I'm saying and then another thing that he needs to realize is to me, there had to be some truth in there. As we all know, with every joke, there's a little bit of truth in that joke, okay? And so if everything was as copacetic as he's trying to claim, check me out, trying to throw in some big words, okay? If everything was as copacetic as he's trying to claim, why did Deja literally unfollow the whole family? Why was she liking comments to her and tweets to her, basically saying that her father was disrespecting her and, you know, people were hoping that she's okay and he's too overbearing? She was liking those particular tweets. And since then, Deja has literally deleted her entire social media presence. So my thing is there has to be some truth to what was said on that platform because why would his daughter take it so personal? Now, if you guys do not know, Deja's mother is finally speaking out. So once again, this lets me know that what he said on that platform was not a joke. He's trying to gaslight and he's trying to deflect. But now the mother is speaking out on social media. And this is what Deja's mother is saying. Go ahead and check this out. So Deja's mother, her name is Miss Nico. And basically, this is what she posted on her Instagram. She wrote, whoo, Chile, the narcissism. <laughs> All right, and I know it's not Chile. I know it's, ooh, child, okay? I understand that. But there was a viral meme that went viral a few months ago where the white girl didn't know how to pronounce child, and she called it Chile for all y'all who don't get the damn joke, okay? So basically, Miss Nico is confirming everything that I felt, that T.I. is narcissistic, he's full of it, and he's trying to deflect and gaslight everybody else, you know what I'm saying? But I'm glad that Jada Pinkett Smith, for the most part, held his feet to the fire, caught up, you know, some of his hypocrisy. You know, at the end of the day, he can use all the big words he wants to use, he could talk in circles, but it is what it is. I feel like what he did to that young girl was embarrassing and it was wrong. That's not nothing that you joke with. You know, your daughter's personal business, her private parts, her hymen, her virginity, that was not a to that should not have been a topic for fodder. Point blank period. You know, do I feel like T.I. should lose custody of all his children and go to jail? No, of course not. Some of y'all are damn extreme. But I just hope that this is a learning lesson for T.I. We all make mistakes in life. We all say things that we sometimes regret. Sometimes we do and say things that hurt people, especially those closest to us. So everything that we do in life, we need to take it as a learning lesson to do better. So instead of being defiant, instead of being arrogant, instead of being narcissistic, listen to what people are telling you. Just apologize and take it as a learning lesson and take it as something to never do again to your daughter because they have another daughter coming up who is heiress, baby heiress. I forgot about her in my last video, but that's the daughter that he has with Tiny. So hopefully he won't do this again when it comes to baby Harris and when she starts going through puberty and things like that. So take it as a lesson learned, T.I., and stop being so defensive, okay? People weren't attacking you because they hate you. People were attacking you and going off because they were embarrassed for your daughter because that was a conversation joking or not that should have never been had okay especially when it comes to Deja like Tiny says she's one of the sweetest out of all the kids she's very quiet very subdued you know what I'm saying she carries herself a certain way and I really really like Deja you know so that's why people went really hard for her because it's not like she's some wild ass girl on social media twerking and shaking her ass and you know being ratchet we've seen other celebrities kids honey and some of them be out here wilding so that's one thing I will say is that T.I. has raised them right you don't see their kids out here doing a bunch of, well especially the daughters you don't see his kids especially his daughters out here doing a bunch of crazy stuff getting into fights cussing folks out so he has done a good job as a father but there's always room to improve that's for everybody even me as a parent nobody's perfect and you have to be able to listen and take advice from other people especially people who are older than us who have experienced things that we haven't experienced you have to take everything as a learning lesson and stop being so defensive so that's the thing that I want to leave with everyone not just T.I. but to everybody we can all learn from each other especially when it comes to parenting and being better parents for our children 
children, okay? So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning T.I. and his interview on the Red Table Talk with Jada Pinkett Smith. Are you guys buying what T.I. is trying to sell? Or do you feel like T.I. is gaslighting, he's trying to deflect, and that he was dead serious when he said what he said on that podcast? And then how do you guys feel about, you know, basically Jada Pinkett Smith holding his feet to the fire and talking about the hypocrisy with how he's raising his son versus his daughter. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And then last but not least, don't forget to hit the bell so you can be down with the notification squad. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts. All right, deuces.